So that's what we're going to use for that. That looks pretty accurate. All right, so let me just take a quick assessment here. What's going to be the easiest way for me to put this together? And I think what I should do here actually is just go ahead and mount these motors on now, uh, considering that there's going to be a, it's going to be a tough angle to get those in later. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing that. Don't be too concerned if you're left over with extra parts, especially with the hardware. Most robot kits leave you with extra stuff on purpose, just in case you lose something or, you know, they're so, they're so small. Uh, maybe they just messed up during packaging and gave you extra stuff. Um, I always wind up with two or three extra screws or nuts, and it's just the typical thing. Now, the nuts, the screws are a bit long, as you can see. They're pretty long here, but they definitely fit in nicely and they are just the right size and they appear to fit right. Okay, so let me continue on with that. Let me take out all the motors here. Okay, so I'm gonna continue with mounting the other ones now. Now if you notice, I haven't used any tools yet. I'm just doing this by hand because it's such a small kit and it seems so simple to put together. You know, and uh, not only that, but since there's a lot of unknowns at this point, I don't want to actually make something permanent and then make it difficult to take off later because I don't know if it's actually correct or not. Again, just like all of our other videos, it's usually our first time working with the unit. So we show the mistakes, we show what happens when you actually go through it and uh, that way you can learn from us and you can see you can have the actual experience of building the unit okay I'm going to put an estimation time of build on this at under an hour and that's only because uh, you know I'm sitting here explaining it if I was quiet and I was just concentrating on this you could probably build this a lot quicker and uh, I would compare this level of difficulty similar to the uh, sumo bot that we built from parallax although the sumo bot was a lot easier but it was also not as scalable as this this platform and uh, this platform is not geared for sumo. It's geared for just about anything you want to do. It's an indoor-outdoor platform. Whereas I don't consider this unit to be able to go off-road in the sense of, you know, go through the dirt and mud and grass. But I see no problems with this unit going out on concrete, pavement, or any other type of, uh, you know, tile or limestone. Maybe uh, some kind of dirt, but not uh, heavy dirt and mud. Uh, considering that these components aren't really built for the outdoors. I don't see how this could be getting wet either, so you might want to be careful with that. Um, now we have a bunch of the screws left over. We have two washers here. We have a bunch of washers over here. I'm not sure where those are going to go yet, but I'm assuming that we'll be using some of these screws, and we'll be using them to mount actually our sensor mounts, because they each take three. So that means that there's nine. And sure enough, we have here approximately eight or nine. Well, there we have eight. Okay, so now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these up. Now, you could use a pair of pliers, which it looks like we're gonna have to use. Right now, I'm just kind of hand tightening this, or holding it with my hand here, at least the nut itself. Now, you're screwing into plastic here, so don't screw it too tight, because you will crack this plastic. I already kind of hear it crackling a little bit, but 
rest assured that this construction is pretty good. So let me go ahead and use my pliers here to just give it a nice turn. You don't have to be super tight. Remember, you're not doing a heavy torque or heavy lifting on this platform. I don't envision anything more than a pound on this platform. So I saw some of you uh, talking about that online. You probably put too much strain on these motors. However, if you find motors small enough, you could probably upgrade the motors yourself. Uh, I'm not quite sure how this gearbox is in here. Looks like it might be plastic gears of some sort. Very, you know, low cost. It's not typical of your regular motors, but I can see how this screws out easily. The other thing I do see here is that we're going to have to do a little bit of soldering if we want to have these cables, these motors connected properly. So we go ahead and screw that one in. Let me just put this off to the side here. And I'm going to screw this in here just like I did the other one. Whoops. No damage done. There you have it. Both of these are now screwed in nicely and mounted. As you can see, that's how it looks like once you're done. And you do have this excess here. You're going to have these screws sticking out. But it doesn't look like to be uh, a big deal. So, next step I'm going to take on here. We're actually going to build this out. Let me see if I should build this out or not. What I might have to do is uh, connect some of this wiring that we have here to the motors. And uh, I have to use that. They give us a good amount of wiring here. Now, in this case, I would typically solder the motor connectors on. So it looks like you might have to do a little bit of soldering of some sort to make sure that this is uh, good. So let me just see if I'm going to have any room by just quickly putting this on and checking it out. Yeah, I definitely think that what you should do is you should stop here. Once you've mounted these on, it's a good thing we mounted them on first because now we have a nice steady st uh, steady uh, platform there that we could actually use to start soldering and doing their things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop here and I'll come back when it comes time to solder and I'm going to analyze how this is going to be soldered figure out where it has to go and how all this wiring has to go. It's a shame that the uh, documentation isn't included with this, but again, this kit's pretty straightforward from what I can tell. And as, a, as an introduction to robotics and getting a good platform to start off with, uh, I definitely think it's good because you're actually, it's, gonna, it's fairly easy to build and you're definitely gonna learn quite a bit because you have to do a little bit of soldering, you have to figure out the wiring, you have to do these things on your own. Uh, sometimes that's a better idea than actually just been, being given all the instructions. So we'll see you in a bit.